Now, one time when it's perfectly okay to create a table on the fly is when you're creating something called a temp table. A temp table will be created in a special database that's set aside for this purpose called tempdb. And these are like work tables, things that you create on the fly, fill with data. You can index them if you want to, then use that data to perform some other operation. Instead of trying to create one gigantic complex query that does everything in one step, you can create queries in SQL Server that perform an operation in a number of steps using temp tables in the middle to hold data temporarily. The data in the temp table will be deleted and the temp table itself will be deleted when this connection ends. So, in this example, I'm selecting tblproduct.star, everything from TBL product, into a temporary table. Why do I know it's temporary? Because we start the name with the pound sign. That's a special symbol anytime you use that pound sign in the beginning of a name of a table when you use select into, it's a temp table. It won't be saved in the database beyond the current batch that's making use of it. So, I select into TBL product back from TBL product where TBL product ID equals 2. I did that and now as long as I stay in this same connection and keep it open, I can select from my TBL product back and retrieve that information and make use of it in subsequent operations. I can also create a temp table using create table, the same statement that would be used if I wanted to create a regular table, persistent table, just again use that pound sign. So here I'm creating a table and we haven't seen before how to create a table using structured query language and the way you do it is you say create table, the name you want and then Inside of parentheses, we're listing the names of all of the columns and the data types for those columns. And you see here that we've done this. We've listed all of that information. I'll just select it all. And I now created this table. And notice it tells me in this case that the table already existed. So it's keeping track inside that tempdb of the fact that we already created a table by that name. Obviously, you would only do this if you hadn't already created one. But if I severed the connection, let's say I just close this. Do you want to save changes? I'll say yes. And now I open it up again, create a new connection. I connect. I open the file that we were looking at, which is here in the D drive, inside of my samples directory called Action Queries. I scroll down to the point I wanted to get to. Now, I'll try that again. I haven't deleted anything in Enterprise Manager. All I did was end the connection and notice this time it completed successfully. So temp tables are automatically deleted for you. You don't have to worry about deleting them. And here's an example of now inserting data into that temporary table. Oh, I got an error. Why did I get this error? Did you notice? The reason is when I closed and opened up again, I made the same mistake that I warned you you would make. I forgot to change the default database. So I was trying to create, to add to TBL product, and there is no TBL product in the master database. TBL product exists in Sharp. So I changed this to the Shark database, and now this operation will succeed five rows were affected. Sometimes you may want to create a temporary table that's not specific to one connection or session, but that can be shared by multiple sessions. You do that, it's called a global temp table. You use two of those hash marks or pound signs. And in this case, this create table will not be limited to the current connection. It'll create a table that can be shared by multiple connections, and this one will be deleted automatically when the last connection that was using it is severed. One other way that you can insert data is to use something called bulk insert. This is very efficient if you have a text file, perhaps you've gotten some information from a mainframe database or something like that, and you have a text file, something like this, and you want to insert into a table in your database. There are a number of options that you can use with this bulk insert. This is something that's based on a program called BCP, 
which stands for Bulk Copy Program. It's something that's been around in SQL Server for a long time. And now we have this command right inside SQL that allows us to perform bulk inserts. So we can take the data from a text file, bring it into a table in our database, and there are quite a number of options that you can specify for this bulk insert. We're only using two of them here, the field terminator, T, which means the tab character is between each field in a row, and the row terminator, N, which stands for new line, which means we have a carriage return line feed at the end. And there are a number of options that you can choose after the with keyword here. I'll just switch over to books online and show you the full syntax for bulk insert. And as you can see, you can specify the batch size, meaning the number of rows that you want. You can specify whether check constraints should be applied or not when you apply this bulk insert, and a whole host of other things. You can specify the maximum number of errors that should be tolerated, and up to that number of errors, your insert will succeed. Beyond that number of errors, it will be canceled. So there's quite a few options you can choose from here, giving you quite a bit of control over the use of this very handy bulk insert command in T-SQL.